Hello friends, this is Rupesh and watching C Winners video series on C++ and today's topic is multiple inheritance in C++. So we have seen single inheritance, multi-level inheritance. Now today's topic is multiple inheritance in C++. So let's look at the point now. A derived class with multiple base class is called multiple inheritance. So if there is something like this, if we have base 1, base 2 and base 3 and we are deriving all these base classes into derived class one derived class so this becomes multiple inheritance you are deriving more than one class into single class and there is this ambiguity problem in multiple inheritance we'll see that when i will show you the example here so let's talk about this example first we have youtuber engineer and rupees this is my name so let's look at the hierarchy how we can draw the diagram here so there will be this youtuber this is one class another class is engineer so this is engineer class and this is myself so rupesh you might have already guessed how the structure would look like and if not i will explain don't worry so this is the example of multiple inheritance and this is a real time example of multiple inheritance so as i said in my previous videos that when you will inherit something, you must be able to tell that Rupees is YouTuber and Rupees is Engineer. So that's why you can inherit both of these inside Rupees. Okay. But reverse is not possible. What I mean to say uh, in reverse is like if there is Rupees on top and if you will put Engineer suppose in bottom, then in that case, this relationship is not holding because Engineer is Rupesh. No, this is not good statement. Rupes is engineer. That is correct. But engineer is Rupesh. That is not correct. So you should always must be able to tell that derived is base, not base is derived. Okay. So this is not correct statement. So until unless you are able to say something like this, you should not derive any class. So I think you would have got the point now. So let's go ahead and implement all these classes so we have a youtuber class and we have engineer class so let's implement this inside this public youtuber comma public engineer and yes this is the syntax of inheriting multiple class into single class you will be using comma to separate all those classes and yeah i wanted to explain one more thing other than this uh, ambiguity problem we'll see this problem later but first we'll see something else so for that you need to have this constructors and I will give some message C out YouTuber and in another one we must have constructor for engineer and here we'll give message okay and let's give the constructor for Rupesh as well so Rupesh I'm creating myself isn't it cool dude yeah it is cool so we are done with this constructions let's look at the way it is going to call these constructors when you are calling this one so that is a very important part here so r1 so let's compile this okay i did one mistake before compiling i should have done this public and public so we must have constructors as public in order to call from outside right so if this is not public we cannot call from outside the class so let's compile this now see it is youtuber engineer and rupesh so let's see why this youtuber is coming before engineer and then later rupesh is coming so let's see why construction is happening in this way first youtuber engineer and then rupesh so remember this whenever you will create a derived class object see this rupesh is a derived class okay because it is deriving youtuber and engineer so whenever you will create a derived class object first it will call itself here but it won't go inside and compiler will automatically append few things here let me just write that uh, compiler will do something like this youtuber comma engineer as this is default constructor compiler can do this but if it is parameterized constructor i mean if your 
base classes need any parameter from derived class then compiler will not be able to write something like this in order to call your base class constructor you have to write explicitly from your derived class constructor like this but only when you have parameters to pass to them what i mean to say is let's suppose you are passing 1 comma 2 and from here you want to pass this integer x is there integer y is there and if you want to pass this x here and y here then you have to explicitly give this syntax but here in our case we were not using any parameters so compiler was able to append all these things automatically okay there is one more thing to understand here the thing is you can see that compiler is calling youtuber first then engineer not because compiler is writing here youtuber first then it is writing engineer no this doesn't matter the only thing which matters is what is the step of inheritance first step you are inheriting this one so always constructor of this class will be called before then the next class i mean this engineer class okay so if you have derived youtuber first in this case we have derived youtuber first so always youtubers constructor will be called first even though you are writing here first engineer let's do that this is engineer and comma and this one so even if you are writing engineer here first and then youtuber your compiler will still call youtuber first then engineer because it calls in this order the inheritance order okay in order to show you that let's take these x and y here so integer y okay so if i'll compile this now let's do that see order have not changed it is still youtuber and engineer even though your engineer is coming here first so now let's verify it by replacing this one with engineer and here we'll write youtuber let's compile this now yeah, see now engineer is coming because engineer is derived first then youtuber so i think you would have got my point there are two things to remember first thing if you're not passing any parameter before we were not passing anything then in that case you don't have to give any base class constructor call because compiler will do it automatically don't worry about that but if you want to pass any parameter from derived class to base class you have to explicitly call them and one more thing you have to call using initializer list syntax only i mean using this colon and this syntax you don't need to go inside this bracket and write something like engineer here engineer and y here and youtuber x you don't i mean you should not do it like this your compiler will not work in this way okay so let's verify that as well compile this again see we got some errors here it is telling you that error here is the error constructor for rupees must explicitly initialize the base class youtuber which does not have default constructor okay yeah the point was you wanted to initialize your base class constructors value i mean this x is a part of your base class somewhere x here so you wanted to initialize that x but take that x value from somewhere derived object so this one was supposed to go inside x and two was supposed to go inside some y here okay and you wanted to do something like this you wanted to initialize that y inside y and here you wanted to initialize that x with x so this inside bracket x is nothing but this x okay this parameters x and this outside x is this x so if you don't know what is this syntax please watch my another video which is about initializer list you will understand this very well so i hope you know this so the error it is saying is from here we are not able to call your youtuber and engineers constructor because there is no default constructor you remember as i 
told you in the beginning that compiler will call only default constructors and there is no default constructor i mean compiler will not create any default constructors if you have provided any constructor by yourself so that is another point to remember i know there are lots of point to remember so this is that error and this i think is nothing but a uh, a temporary object creation so here it is temporary object here it is temporary object it is not initializing x and y of their respective data members for r1 okay so in short don't dig so much because this series is for beginners and you should remember that you should explicitly write the base class constructor call in initializer list only okay you should not do inside the brackets so it is very easy to remember that okay so if you will do it like this let's compile now see it has compiled successfully and it is calling in the order of inheritance okay so these are the points to remember whatever the order would be your constructors are going to call in that order so engineer will be called first then youtuber then rupesh so first engineer then youtuber then rupesh so if the construction happened in this order then destruction will happen in this order okay i mean if engineers constructor was called first then youtuber then rupesh but if you are calling the destructor part then first this was construction and if you will go for the destruction it will be in reverse order first rupesh then youtuber is in middle so it will be in middle and then engineer okay so this is what the order should be in destructor if you don't know why it is like this why destruction happens in reverse order of the construction i have a video for that you will be getting the link somewhere here or i will give you in the description field don't worry about that so you complete this video and go ahead and watch that one also because there is some extra bit of information you should be knowing and if i forgot to give the link please remind me in the comment section because sometimes i forget because i shoot 3 4 videos at a time and i don't remember what i said in some videos so we have seen how to deal with all these uh, calling way and all now let's understand what is this ambiguity problem here so to explain you a little bit what is ambiguity let's assume that there are two similar functions in both the classes so there is this youtube youtuber and we have another engineer in that case let's assume both are having similar function one similar function let's assume it is work because both work so both will have one similar function work and work and if you are inheriting these two into rupesh yeah this is going to be a very good example so at one time either i am working in my company as an engineer or working as a youtuber in my home so at a time i'll be doing one thing so at a time i'll be calling some specific work function so work is there in youtuber also work is there in engineer also but at a time i'll be using any one of them not both of them because i don't create videos in my office and i don't bring my office in my home so let's see how to solve this ambiguity and yeah what is ambiguity i'll show you that so let's implement some ambiguity code here so as i said void work and see out work working on youtube and here we can have similar function work and here we can give the message working in office or i should say working as engineer will it make sense yeah i think it would working as engineer okay now let's suppose you have this r1 i'll keep all these uh, parameters as it is don't worry about this parameter much so r1 dot work you just want to call this that's it now let's compile and check the problem here see it has said that there are two errors okay first error is some uh, void is missed spelled v o i d and let's compile this again so there is only one error and that error is yeah member found by ambiguous name why because 
as i said this r1 will have work from youtuber and similar work function from engineer so if i'm going to call work it don't know which one to call this is the ambiguity problem and let's see how to solve this problem so the first way to solve this problem is explicitly telling that which function i want to call and that would be like this r1 dot youtuber work so i'm explicitly telling that r1 should call a work function which is of youtuber class so let's comment this code and check whether this code is working or not see it is working as we want see working on youtube okay so this is working and similarly you can go for engineer one also so r1 dot engineer work so if we will compile this let's do that see it is working and calling the working as engineer i should make this u as big u okay so this was the first way to call your functions by explicitly telling that i want to call this function which is from so and so classes now another way is you can type cast this r1 into your base classes okay what do i mean by type casting here you can explicitly create rupesh engineer is equal to r1 so in this case r1 is being assigned to engineer but it is re so rupesh engineer so as we know that r1 is holding both youtuber and engineer and its own stuff so actually r1 is rupesh class plus engineer class plus youtuber class so r1 is of these three type combined but if you are assigning r1 into its base classes one of the base classes then it will copy only those materials from r1 which belongs to particular class i mean engineer class so you are initializing r1 into engineer so it will take all the engineers data from r1 and put into this one so after doing this you can directly call work because there is no ambiguity here this re is of type engineer and engineer class have only work one work function so let's check that as well see it has printed two times engineers and engineer okay so second time was because of this one and similarly you can initialize this r1 into youtuber class also let me do that just for the sake of completeness youtuber rupesh youtuber is equal to r1 and rupesh youtuber dot work so if you will call this one it will do the same thing let's compile this see in the end it is printing working on youtube okay so i hope you got the point here and this thing is called slicing you are slicing out the rest of the part from r1 and initializing whatever is part of engineer in that okay so this is called slicing if you don't know what is slicing i have a detailed video on that please search object slicing in c++ you will get that video and you know what there is another method also let me get rid of all these things and if you know what is static cast dynamic cast and all those casts it will be very easy for you to understand this third point otherwise please go ahead and watch static cast video i have that as well and if i am telling something that i have this video and you are not getting that video by searching in youtube then just write that title whatever the title you are searching for and then space and then cpp nuts so if you type my channel name it will automatically come because it might not be ranked as top because i have recently uploaded it or for some another reason so we are talking about the third type the third type is you cast r1 using static cast static cast into engineer okay so r1 would be casted into engineer so you can put the bracket here to exactly understand this like this and we can call work on that okay so if you will compile this it will call working as engineer 
okay so this is also possible and this bracket is not necessary i guess let me get rid of this and compile this see it is working as it is so these three calls are constructor calls don't worry about that this one is our interest okay so this is not ambiguous anymore because we have typecasted r1 into engineer and on that we are calling work function ultimately we are calling work on engineer type only so there is no ambiguity at all and similarly we can do the same thing for youtuber so if i will replace this engineer with youtuber and let's compile again see it is working on youtube okay so let's look at if there are two different functions so is there any problem and yeah you can have different different functions in them and you can use that and that's pretty good so let's implement something like void thinking for video and let's print some message thinking about some video and here we can have void thinking for project so i may be thinking about my project or my video at any time so thinking about project not problem project and these two functions are not similar so we can call them without any issue so our one dot thinking for video and our one dot project and if you will compile this now see it is telling that thinking about some video and thinking about the project so there is no problem in this code because i can think about video or project anytime but i can work on them one at a time i cannot work on project here as an engineer and i cannot create a youtube videos simultaneously so we needed type casting because there was some ambiguity and when there is no ambiguity you can directly call those functions because compiler knows only one function is there i mean this thinking for video is available in youtuber class only so it will directly call that function without any problem okay so i think we should wrap up this video now thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe to my channel so that you will get the notification for upcoming videos like this i'll see you in the next videos bye bye